It took a lot of chopping and sawing to build up the middle section of this country. This time around, it's back to the heartland. Tinley Park, Illinois and Chicagoland, the best lumberjack sports competitors in the United States. The U.S. Championships, the Steel Timber Sports Series. stage for the best choppers and sawyers in the country. The Steel Timber Sport Series presented by Ram. And here we are at the U.S. Championships 2016, Tenley Park, Illinois, in the Chicago Southland area. And we begin the final two legs of this journey. 20 athletes are qualified for the semifinals. We now split them into two pools of 10 each. In this round, you have one objective, finish in the top four. That's the way you make it to the finals. Tommy Sanders here with Kevin Holtz. Six chopping and sewing disciplines. Kevin in pool A and leading the way the man everyone has their eyes on, and that's Matt Koger going for a four-peat, the first time ever for an American. Well, and here's what makes Matt Koger so consistent. It's his emotional neutrality. He approaches everything with an even keel. So along with Matt Koger in Pool A is another one of my favorite picks, Walt Page. He is one of the few guys in this field, and he just has that same sort of emotional flat tone where he just takes everything in stride. All right, can anyone catch Matt Goger? A lot of qualified guys chasing him today on the first semifinal program in the Steel Timber Sport Series U.S. Championships presented by Ram. Here's how the scoring breaks down 10 lumberjack athletes competing in six different disciplines. The top time from each discipline is awarded 10 points. Last place is awarded one point and zero points for a DQ. The top four in points, total points, will move on to the finals. We're ready to go with maybe the toughest event of all the disciplines, the springboard chop. In the springboard chop, in the still series, we use aspen or poplar trees on go. Everyone starts and they'll put a pocket in down at about three and a half feet off the ground. Normally four to six hits is a good pocket. You put a board into it, get up on that board, put another pocket in at about, uh, about six feet off the ground. Uh, another four or six hits, get on that and uh, the first to sever the block on top is the winner. Well, let's get you up to speed on how we got our time to beat in our first heat of the springboard. It would feature four veterans, Richard Jordan, Mike Forrester, Daryl Weekland, and Mike Slingerland. But Forrester is putting on a clinic. And it would be Mike Forrester taking the top time in just under a minute 13. On pole number one, Matt Slingerland of North Carolina. That was his dad, Mike, we saw in heat number one of the springboard chop. Pole number two, Matthew Bolton, Canandaigua, New York, has competed in the past in timber sports. And the first man ever, if he can pull it off, win this time around. Steel Timber Sports U.S. Championship presented by Ram. It'll be the first time uh, an American has done a four-peat in this event. Our defending champion, Matt Koger. Uh, the heat of Matt's here, you know, I, I'm a little bit biased in this one. I am watching Matt Bolton. He currently lives and, and uh, spent a lot of time one town away from me in New yes. York State. And it's great to see him come back to the sport. He came through all the right, college gentlemen. ranks. Obviously, Timer's all ready. eyes on Matt Koger, Contested our current ready. reigning champion. Three, and of course, two, young Matt one, Slingerland, oh. looking to best the uh, time that his dad laid out in that first heat. Time to beat a minute 12.77 laid down by Mike Forrester in heat number one. Yeah, look at this, Bolton up, pole number two just ahead of Matt Coker. Matt had to do a little finger broom in there and clean out some chips. 
Coger, though, has got it reeled in now. Oh, trouble for Bolton off that wow. second board. Down off the second board. Was looking good. Was almost blow for blow with Coger up until that point. But now Matt Coger's absolutely going to town on that block. Trouble for Slingerland, too. Quick turn for Matt Coger, and this will not be long before that block comes up. There we go. Super competitive time, 54 and 13 unofficially. Watch how deep Matt Coger wades into the front side of this block. Look at the back, though. One down, one up, one more to clear that last chip, and then he cleans it off. Well, Matthew Bolton's going to come down with a minute 47.99. Matt Slingerland with a minute 38.86. And Matt Coger, one of the best times recorded this year, 53.65. No, it was a good, good start to the day, you know, just to get the heart pumping, the blood pumping too. So, 54, that can be improved on a lot. You know, I was fumbling around with the chips in the back of the pockets and stuff, and chips weren't really moving out of the way, so I had to take you know, some time to put those away. But, yeah, it'll be time to make a 40 second cut later. Sort of an East Coast, West Coast setup in our final heat, the springboard chop. There's a man who was uh, definitely a part of the equation last year in the chase for the championship 2015. Nathan Waterfield of New York, Rob Weibel, the perennial from the West Coast, probably in his third decade of competition, Steel Timber Sports. Walt Page of California, out of the college program at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and uh, the time to beat is a 53.66. You know, right, I'm looking for him to repeat that again Timer's here today. Ready. Walt has the sort of emotional ready. numbness, Three, much two, like guys one, like Matt Coger. Oh. I think you've heard of him, our, yeah. our a potentially four-time champion, working towards it anyways. And Walt has that ability to kind of shut the emotion out of it, put in a clean cut, but trouble on that first board. You saw, Tommy, his left toe is nearly jammed in the pocket with the board. He does not have confidence in that board. He's losing leverage. That's fine on this first board set. But when he gets to this second board, he's got to be able to get all the way out to that little wood cleat at the end of the springboard. Look at the other two competitors in this heat, though. Well, Walt Page certainly making up some time for a, a few little sort of miscalculations at the start, though. But he's going to really have to hustle. And he's not going to do it. He is not going to beat the time already laid down by Matt Coker. You can see he's worked himself right down to a V as he gets into the back of his block. But both these, oh, Weibel with a glance. Wow. Oh. Nathan Waterfield might have nailed him right at the very end there. We're going to wait for the replay. Unofficial time, about a minute three. I am just astonished that Walt Page was able to reel in Nathan Waterfield this much after a very weak first board. Let's watch this replay here to see if we can pick a winner. Look at that, Waterfield. He's gonna be captain split second now after New York City last <laughs> right. year in the standing block chop, and now he just best Walt Page. That's, that's good, second place, it's good. That's where I wanna be, but my focus is one event at a time, competing against myself, and that's, that's most of the time I beat, my, I beat that cut all day long, so that, uh, that's a loss for me. Final Heat may have been the top seeds, and uh, they were able to hold their own except for the top spot. Matt Coger hangs on to that for his win, picking up where he left off at the end of 2015. But right after that, Nathan Waterfield, Walt Page, and Rob Weibel in that order for the top four spots. And of course, the top four is where you want to wind up at the end of the day. At this point, after a single discipline, Mike Forrester is the first man out. One discipline down, five events to go. Coming up next, we put away the axes and crank up the chainsaws. Motorsports fans, get ready. Two men, two machines square off in the stock saw. And later, what kind of gift did you give your spouse when you got married? We'll meet an athlete who used his skills and knowledge to give his wife a wedding present for the ages. The Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championship from Tinley Park, Illinois is underway. The Steel Timber Sports Series on ABC is brought to you by Ram. Guts, Glory, Ram. Duluth Trading, designed and tested by Tradesman. And John Deere, nothing runs like a deer.
How great it is to be in Chicagoland this time around for the Steel Timber Sports Series. So much to see and do. We had a chance to hook up with some of the city's finest for a very important history lesson. Well, this historical building right here is located 202 East Chicago Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Engine 98 it was built in 1902. It has a lot of rich history. Everything in here is original. All the original woodwork is in here. The original brass pole is in here. And pretty much everything in here is originally is still in place, is still intact. Uh, we've been taking care of it since 1904. Just south of downtown Chicago in Tinley Park at the Tinley Park Convention Center, it's the Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championship. Today, 10 Lumberjacks vying for one of the coveted championship spots. Only the top four will move on, and right now, defending champ Matt Coger sits atop the leaderboard as we head into our second discipline, the Stock Saw. This is the stock car racing in Timber Sports. Two equally matched steel MS660 one chainsaws are timed, tacked, and tuned to be within hundreds of a thousandth of a second of each other in the woods. Two matched 20 inch guide bars and two factory ground chains are on these saws, so the only variable between the bunks is the operator. Just around the Ram logo right now. In this contest, 16 inches of wood will be severed with one down cut, one up cut. Competitors trying to move slow and smooth, keeping the saw in the wood and feeding it wood as fast as possible. Get Let's get you up to speed on how we got our time to beat. In our first heat, it would be Matt Bolton taking on Nathan Waterfield. And it would be Waterfield besting Bolton, setting the time to beat at 11.94. That was not a winning winning run. Hopefully that's mid-pack, but anytime you're headed towards the line, you start to panic and you're steering the saw, steering the saw, turning it. The saw can only cut so fast when you're steering it away from that line. Next heat coming up in the stock ready. saw, it's gonna be Matt Slingerland going up against Daryl Wheat. All the competitors here today wearing their PPE, having their equipment in place, ear, eye, and leg protection. And of course, they have to have a safe start with the saw as well. You see Darrell Weakland at the saw pinned down Hands to the ground. The Matt Slingerland holding the saw between his Hands legs. Three wood. points of contact is the Get safety rule. Both these guys clean the wood. Listen to the saws. Listen how consistent they are through the block. That little, looks strong. Yeah, you're going to hear that little bog down, little pull down. I think that was Daryl Weakland's saw. I'm guessing it was Daryl Weakland's saw as he came up short in that heat. Fast start for Matt Slingerland, and he comes out on top. Walt Page comes into the second discipline, the stock saw in third place. Ram overall points. That's him on stand number one. Stand number two, of course, the number one man in points, Matt Coker. Tommy, this was always a discipline that I loved when it went well, and I was always relieved when it was Hands over because wood. so much happens in such Hands a short window wood. of time, and the Get tiniest set. mistake on your part is irreparable. Wow, Matt was, or excuse me, Walt was to that wood. Both these guys were to the wood exceptionally fast. I can't believe the pressure that Walt was applying on the top. Look at these guys from the top. Oh, I think Matt may have got him. Matt may have nipped him right at the end. felt it on the changeover. Watch both these guys coming down through the block. Matt Coger on your right, Walt Page on the left, both with exceptionally quick changes. Walt just seems violent with his changes. A little bit of a wobble there from Walt Page. What a race. There he is, Matt Coger just taking him at the very end there, 11.66, a second. Overall points right there. Walt Page in 11.86. Good, tight racing here at Tinley Park, Illinois with one more heat left to go in the stock saw. Pool B, Mike Slingerland. Position one, Rob Weibel, position number two. Hands on the wood. Hands on the wood. Get set. See the preference difference here. Mike Slingerland standing with the block of wood to his left. Rob Weibel, oh wow. Oh, Rob Weibel stopping the chain on stand number two. Aggressive with that switch. 
Holy cow, I don't think I've seen that in, in a long time. An epic amount of force from Rob Weibel. He knows it. You can see how that worked out for Rob Weibel. See a little foot shift there from Rob. I don't like to see that with the competitors moving their feet around. Just something as simple as that. Look at it. He came way down out of that block, shoved it back up in, recovered, didn't stall, and then stalls the song. Well, Mike Slingerland's 11.78. Good enough for third place overall. Son, Matt Slingerland, the man on top when it's all said and done, 11.34. Matt Koger picks up third place points and Richard Jordan in fourth. Taking a look at our Ram overall points with that win, Matt Slingerland slides into fourth place. Remember, only the top four move on to the championship round. I'm a second generation competitor. My father was a world champion back in the 80s. Um, on Father's Day, a few months ago, I met with my dad. After, right after a competition that Matt won the all-around for. And, uh, and he was talking about it, and he was so proud that I did so much more in the sport than he did, and that now Matty is doing so much more than I ever did. 15 years of having one of the top competitors as your teacher, you know, you can't help but be right there. Welcome back, and here's kind of a head scratcher. We referred to this earlier. What do you really give your intended for a wedding gift? It could be a hard one to figure out, but for Walt Page and his home up in the Sierras, he had the perfect gift in mind for his wife to be Caitlin, one that utilized his lumberjack skills. We're headed up to the, to the place where Caitlin and I used to live, where the, where the barn is we got married in. Caitlin wanted to She'd, she'd, she'd mentioned something to me about having a barn wedding. And I needed a training area too, so it worked out well for me. So I, uh, I spent the spring before the still series getting chopping wood and, and rebuilding a barn. It was pretty much falling apart, so it was quite the task for him to do, but he did it from the ground up, milled boards himself for the barn. I saved a lot of the roofing tin, reused a lot of it. There's a little section of new, new steel over here. It took about four months to build the structure. And it was right before the still series, the first time that he was in it. So he had to work, train, and build the barn before our wedding. So he was very busy during that time. I uh, rode to the Still Series with uh, David Moses and Brandon Sergei. We drove there, and then I had to—I couldn't—I couldn't drive back with them. I had to fly home because I was getting married four days, I think, after the Still Series got done with. So I had to—I had to fly home and put the finishing touches on the barn, and and uh, and then we got married. He's just. He'll do anything for anyone. And the barn was just something that I said I wanted for the wedding and he just hopped right up and him and his brother redid it along with the help of some family and friends. But it meant the world to me to be able to have a wedding in a barn that he built. It just made it really special. The Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championships underway just south of Chicago at the Tenley Park Convention Center. Today, 10 Lumberjacks are battling for a spot in the championship. Only the top four will move on to the next round. Right now, the father-son duo of Matt and Mike Slingerland battling on the bubble. While defending champ Matt Koger is cruising towards the next round. As we head into our third discipline of the day, the standing block chop. Let's get you up to speed, see how we got our time to beat in the first heat of the standing block. It would be Richard Jordan, Rob Weibel, and Daryl Weekland squaring off in a three-way dance, and it would be Rob Weibel taking the win and setting the top time just under 26 seconds. Here we go, a father-son matchup here, including Mike and Matt Slingerland on either end of the stage here and right in the center is bucket man himself, Nathan Waterfield. All right, gentlemen, timer's ready. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. 
father son book end waterfield waterfield an exceptional standing block cutter and he is not wasting any time on this block Slingerland, the elk, Mike around first, opening two and two. Excuse me, one and one. One up hit, one down hit. Big chip comes out, clears the wood. It looks like Waterfield, though, has what it takes. Look out, top of the block for Mike, flying off towards the edge of the stage. Check out this slow-mo shot of Waterfield's block. You can see on that near hit, the top of that block wiggles and twists just ever so slightly. That opens up the firewood for him to finish it off. Nathan Waterfield, no nonsense, zipping right through that block to take over the top spot with a time of 21.27. Mike Slingerland, 23.74. Matt Slingerland down at 26.89. Matthew versus Matthew in this one. Our points leader, Matthew Koger, by five coming into this discipline, going up against Matthew Bolton, whom you say has been doing some pretty good chopping recently. Yeah, and Springboard did not go well. He had a micro meltdown on that second uh, board set, and, and right, some part of my psyche, I Timer's said, ready. good. Because you knew there was going to be a ready. rookie meltdown. Okay. Three, Let's just get it two, out of the way one, the first discipline. Go. This will be a chance for him to kind of redeem himself if he can psychologically hold it together. Two and two, putting in very quick hits. He has to go back and pick up that far down hit. Koger around the back, about 2.5 hits ahead of Bolton. Look at Koger though, just grenading the top of that block. Bolton reaching far, one more round of chips, trying to drive too soon though. There it is, goes back for one more. Koger showing why he is our multi-time U.S. champion so there, in that US standing block shot. A little bit ahead of that, but not by much. Matt Koger in the back of the block. Here's where the risk comes in for Matt Koger, just attacking this block with downward drivers. He has to be 100% precise and chase each hit down that same curve, that same line of the axe. Final heat here, pool A, Mike Forrester. Block number two, position number two, going up against Walt Page. The time to beat Matthew Koger, 17.07. Best time this season is Walt Page's 18.60, so it's not right, the best gentlemen. time this season so far. Timers ready. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go. Mike Forrester, Walt Page, Page both Gunner, West Coast guys. Forrester just blistering this block right now. Walt Page, long, lanky arms, brings the axe from a, a mile away. Both these guys turning in unison. Remember, Forrester had a respectable finish in the springboard, but then fumble in the stock saw. Page, Forrester, it's Page! Front side of the blocks went fairly uniform for these two competitors, but it is the back that fell apart for Mike Forrester and not in a good way. There's your final results there in the 1707 by Matt Koger. Kind of hard for the rest of this field to deal with there. Walt Page with his 19.51, the only other man under 20 seconds for second place. Waterfield and Forrester round out the top four. There are your overall points for Pool A. Remember, only the top four advance to the finals. Matt Koger leading the way with a comfortable margin as it stands right now. Then it gets pretty tight. Walt Page, Nathan Waterfield, Mike Slingerland in that order, and son Matt Slingerland, the man out two points behind his dad. Halfway done with our competition, and the tension begins to build for these athletes as they battle for one of the four spots in the championship. Next, a race pitting man versus man, each equipped with six foot racing saws. Watch as they throw their entire body into the single bump. Right now, it's time for our John Deere legacy moment as we look at another inductee into the Steel Timber Sports Hall of Fame. He may have been compact of frame, but he certainly packed a lot of power, agility, and competitive zeal into everything he did in the world of timber sports, Carson Bosworth. When I first came into the sport in the early 90s, it was, it was Mike Sullivan, Rollin Esslinger, Mel Lentz. That's all you heard. The first tournament I went to in Webster Springs, I saw all these guys. And in the final heat of the standing block, his small guy in stature, Carson Bosworth, I think, 
Who is this Carson Bosworth? Carson's going for the drive and there it is. Carson was a tremendous competitor. In fact, Carson, you know, I look at Carson's body type as, as a little bit similar to mine. He was a shorter guy, a little bit stocky. He was the Tasmanian devil when you would get him on top of the springboard. Once he was up on that top, top board, whether it was a good board or not a good board, he, he just powered through, man. And Carson Bosworth coming off first in this heat, a minute. 20. I don't know what he weighed, but he, he chopped like he was 300 pounds out there. 9.9, Carson's going for the drive, and there it is. He was an excellent single Sawyer. 14.61, the unofficial time for Carson Bosworth, and that'll put him in the lead. Jerry Carson has Hunt. been competing, as I understand it, basically forever. Not a giant guy, but a guy who gets every ounce of horsepower out of himself to produce good outcomes, and who all the time is giving it hell. Six a time to beat. Oh, unofficially, 50.55 seconds. That's unofficial. The Steel Timber Sports Series on ABC continues coming to you from the Chicagoland area. Your defending champ, Matt Coker, is on a quest to get his fourth U.S. title. And right now, he's sitting atop our leaderboard at Ram overall points. Remember, only the top four at the end of the day will move on to the finals. Fans at home, now pay close attention. If you want a Gator, we'll be giving one lucky fan a John Deere Gator XUV 590i crossover utility vehicle valued at over $10,000 or a chance for other steel equipment prizes, head over to steeltimbersports.com where you can enter for a chance to win. You can also enter for a chance by following us on Twitter at twitter.com slash timbersports and answering one of our weekly trivia questions, along with using the hashtag timbersports. Enter online now. You could be riding a John Deere Gator soon. Ready to go now with our fourth discipline of the day, the full body workout known as the single buck. The single buck is often affectionately referred to as the misery whip. With times approaching 12 or 14 seconds to get through a 19 inch log, the fastest sprint in timber sports. Competitors use a specially tuned race only crosscut saw that has been laser cut and hand filed back and forth through the saw. The cutting teeth and the rakers work to work the wood fibers out as an oiler and wedger keeps the cookie from pinching on the saw. Fastest time, top to bottom wins. Let's get you brought up on how we got our time to beat in the first heat. It would be Rob Weibel taking on Richard Jordan. And it would be Jordan taking the win, setting the top time at just under 17 seconds. Mike Forrester in the foreground right there. Second heat, the single buck. Kool Aid going up against Walt Page. All right, gentlemen. We saw these two go head to head in the standing block where it was advantage Page. Forrester on a bit of a meltdown in some events did not cut well in the stock saw or the standing block. He is another horsepower Sawyer, sort of just muscling through. When you look at the finesse and technique from Walt Page, there it is the Forrester horsing off the bottom of that, avoiding disaster. So Mike Forrester and Walt Page take over spots one and two. Forrester with a time of 14.26. Station number two back there, Matt Coger currently cruising along. Ram overall points a comfortable lead over a second place Walt Page. Going up against the man who's hanging in there in fourth place, Mike Slingerland. All right, gentlemen, timer's ready. Three, two, one, go. Matt Coger all the way over on stand number two on the right side of the stage, getting some support from his dad, Paul. He spent a lot of time up in the North Country, up around Quebec City, getting a lot of coaching from J.P. Mercier. But in this case, it's advantage Mike Slingerland. So Mike Slingerland will tell you a lot about mass and how he is just absolutely bursting with awesomeness. Watch yeah, the last push stroke <laughs> coming up right here as he horses down through the bottom. He was fully committed to ending that cut right there. If it didn't go on that push stroke, he was done for. There was no recovering from that. Mike Slingerland will look back at this heat right here, the time when he took down our uh, last three 
year's champion, Matt Koger. A great effort there, 13.08. Matt Koger turning up third in the single buck after that one. Well, we are going to settle the North Carolina State Championship no matter what happens <laughs> in this heat right here. We've got Daryl Weekland and Matt Slingerland, and these two Tar Heels are both chasing our leader right now, who is Mike Slingerland, right, at the time of 13.08. Contestants ready. We saw Mike Slingerland step Three, out as two, Matt Slingerland one, was go. getting set up. Maybe some words of advice for his son. Look at the pace that Matt Slingerland is bringing to stand number two. Oh, but it fails him in the middle of the wood. I've never seen him bring this veracity to this block. Unbelievable pace. Did not take down his dad according to the unofficial time. And most likely the, the inhibiting factor was that hang up in the middle. Well, there you go, North Carolina, one, two, three. Mike Slingerland, Matt Slingerland, and Daryl Wheaton taking top three positions, top three points totals right there. Mike Forrester hanging on for fourth place, and Nathan Waterfield dropping down to fifth. But being in the same pool, it's it's a little bit, I, I'm, I have mixed emotions because it's really looking like only one of us is gonna make it. And I thought this was his year. Maybe we'll both make it but I wish he was the one that was making it instead of me, to be honest. But I'm not gonna lay down for him either. So total points with two disciplines left. There's Matt Koger. And that train in the right direction as he's trying for his four P here in 2016. Mike Slingerland moving into the second place spot there, tied with Nathan Waterfield, Walt Page in the fourth position, and Matt Slingerland, the son of Mike Slingerland there in fifth place. So tight competition. This one's far from decided yet who the top four will be. When we come back, our last chopping event of the day, athletes compete in an all-out sprint where axes land just inches from their feet. The underhand coming up next. Steel Timber Sports Series U.S. Championship underway just south of downtown Chicago from Tinley Park, Illinois. And with that win and the single buck, veteran Mike Slingerland sits in second place in Ram overall points. Only the top four move on to the finals. Ready now for the final chopping event of the day, the underhand. Here we go, the last chopping event of the day in the fifth of six disciplines. For the guys in Pool A, we're starting out with four of them, Daryl Weakland from left right, to right. Gentlemen. Next to him, Richard Jordan, Time Mike ready. Slingerland, and Nathan Waterfield. Ready. Three, two, one, go! Well, here's a batch of guys that I would definitely classify as underhand cutters. I'm watching stand number three, though. Mike Slingerland is riding high on this single buck win, mm -hmm. and he's turned quick, he's putting in big hits. Waterfield's definitely gonna give him a run for his money. Waterfield, a very clean technical cut, a small hang up, one, two, three down, has go back for a fourth. It is Waterfield to take the heat. Nathan Waterfield put the work in on the front side of the block, and he was able to cash that in on the back side. You see there he goes top, punches it in the guts. This one was supposed to hang out the bottom. It didn't quite make it. He had to go back and play pickup sticks. One last hit at the bottom got the job done. I hung up in the block, and my opening blows really on both sides. When that happens, I tend to go to conservative, make sure I just cut it off in a good time and not really get a bad time. Hopefully it doesn't bite me. Nathan Waterfield hoping to hang on with a 21-56. That's the lead so far. When you think about this sport, you think of all the different positions, all the different approaches to the wood that these guys take, but it's all built on a firm foundation. A firm foundation, by necessity, must include the right pair of shoes. Let's just get to the bottom of this with another Duluth Trading Company, Adrian Flick's Flick Facts. Looking around backstage, in addition to the axes and saws, the other thing there's a lot of is shoes. You say, Competitive lumberjacks, why, why aren't they wearing boots? Don't they need to be worried about safety? This is an athletic pursuit. This is a, a sporting event. And so most of the competitors are either wearing a soft-soled indoor soccer-type shoe or a field cleat that has been ground flat and had spikes installed. When we come to a contest, 
we normally have three different sets of shoes. We have a set of shoes that we chop in, which are either volleys or vans. I use vans. Most guys use volleys. Then we have our spikes. Uh, those spike shoes can vary from a soccer spike. To, I'll use wrestling shoes where I have actually put corks in them. And then we normally have a heavy boot just in case uh, the chain would come off and, and smash our right foot. And so normally three sets of shoes, it's a lumberjack shoe bag. Each one of those choices, it's up to the competitor, it's up to them for each individual event, but it is never, never heavy logger boot. We're three across in this second heat of the underhand chop. Mike Forrester on the left. Mike Forrester currently in sixth place. Graham overall points in the pool. Pretty important one for Walt Page. He's on the uh, all-important fourth spot right now. So he'll do well to perform well in this, and of course on All block right, number gentlemen. three. Timer's ready. Matthew Bolton. It's surprised Contestants to see Walt ready. on the bubble. Three, two, one, I think one, uh, a go. lot of people had him mm -hmm. pegged to really get oh, Matt yeah. Coker a run for the money. And at this Four point, he's in jeopardy not making the finals. Holy cow, Matt Bolton is around at around the 10 second mark. He is either going to make a statement in this underhand chop or bury himself quite deep. Walt Page doing the job though on the front. Matt Bolton showing us once again, you gotta do your homework on the front side of that log. Walt Page turning way behind Matt Bolton. Clean hit on the backside. That ax is working in that block, but I don't think he got the job done. Walt Page spends a little more time investing in the front of that block and it pays dividends on the back. Man, did he clear a lot of wood on the bottom back. Walt Page with a 21-88 officially, good enough to take over second place. Points, we got one more heat left to go in the underhand. Here we go with our final heat here. Station two to start it off, it's Matt Slingerland. Matt definitely in the points picture. Rob Weibel, the center block and our leader. An overall Ram All points, right, Matt Coger. Timer's ready. Block number four. Contestants ready. Three, two, one, go! Well, certainly a marquee matchup in the underhand chop for this pole. These guys synchronized cutting. Now the rhythm starts to fall apart. It is Koger around first, opens up two hits, two more, clearing out huge chips. Matt Slingerland behind on Koger, but cutting a clean block nonetheless. Matt Koger and 1823 showing on that unofficial clock. Matt Koger, 17.85, enough to take the top spot and solidify his spot in the championship round. As we head into our last event, the remaining three spots are up for grabs as Nathan Waterfield, Matt Slingerland, Mike Slingerland, and Walt Page hover around that bubble position. To solidify a seat at the championship, these Axemen will have to perform in our most dangerous and unpredictable event of the day. Lumberjacks attempting to maneuver 60 horsepower machines with chain speeds over 200 miles an hour Get ready, the hot saw is next. The Steel Timber Sports Series on ABC is brought to you by Ram. Guts, glory, Ram. Duluth Trading, designed and tested by Tradesman. And Dinty Moore, lumberjacks eat more, Dinty Moore. down to our final event at the first of two knockout rounds of the Steel Timber Sports U.S. Championships. Tommy Sanders along with Kevin Holtz only. The top four move on and right now Matt Koger, the only athlete to solidify his spot. He's moving on to the championship. Three spots remain as Nathan Waterfield, Matt Slingerland, Mike Slingerland, and Mike Forrester are all in striking distance as we head into our most unpredictable, unforgiving event. 60 horsepower, modified machines. It's time for the hot saw. The hot saw is contested when lumberjacks have been left in the garage too long over a cold winter with too many extra chainsaw parts, snowmobile parts, and little extra time. 383 cc's of alcohol-fueled fury. A perfectly good dirt bike gives up its heart and soul to power a chainsaw. 
from 250 all the way up to 383 cc's. Competitors try to make three cuts, two down, one up in six inches, allocated on a 19 inch white pine log. What has started as innocent racing tradition has become sort of the mad scientist Frankenstein part of timber sports. How about that? Time should be in the five to six second range as these contestants try to move basically a galloping horse at 65 horsepower up and down as smooth as possible. Let's get you up to speed and see how the push for the championship plays out in our first heat. Sitting on the bubble, Mike Slingerland takes on Matthew Bolton and a costly error would end Mike Slingerland's U.S. Championship dreams. He said, he said he choked it by putting his belly on the car. You know. I can see it. There's a bunch of fuel right there. This is a kind of not complimentary at all, but basically I'm too fat to run a hot saw now. I came down, I was standing a bit too close to the log, and when I picked the saw up, I had to pull it to myself to make the cuts, and I choked the saw out on my stomach with the carburetor being right there. So I need to have a cage on that so that it has, gets oxygen even when someone my size is running it. Nathan Waterfield, Mike Forrester, ready to tee it up. Nathan Waterfield in good right, shape gentlemen. here. Second. Timer's ready. Overall points coming ready. into the hot. Hands on the wood. Hands on the wood. Get set. Waterfield saw sounding exceptionally well once it fired. I'm not sure what went wrong though at the start. Let's go back and look at this hang up for Nathan Waterfield. No, no, there it is. The starter cord, the knot of the starter cord did not release. He finally gets it gathered up, gets his foot on the expansion chamber, just gives it a, a warm up style start and gets his three cuts. Mike Forrester, the best time so far with that effort right there, 6.78. Rob Weibel holding on into second place. Nathan Waterfield took him a while, but he's got a time. It's posted 14.27. Heat number four of five, ready to go right now. Pretty important heat for Matt Slingerland. But what's important for him? Lay down three cuts. Get yourself a time in the books and you're in. Going to the final. Going up against Richard Jordan. Big side to settle the nerves for Matty Slingerland. Watch the disaster unfold for his dad. He certainly wants to do better than that. Hands on the wood. Hands on the wood. Get set. I just, the, the hesitation, the bobbles on stand number one, trouble on stand number two, but if we were to delete the, the eon of time that went by <laughs> for Richard Jordan and just look at that cut, Ugh. unbelievable. Got the nod from Rich Hallett. Got a time, he's going, going to the finals. Well, there you go, Nathan Waterfield. He's in with a 14.67. Now Matt Slingerland in with an 11.56. Didn't have to do anything special. Just had to make three cuts, but gave us a little drama nonetheless. Woo! <laughs> you got a big smile on your face, wow. First time in the finals. About time, about time. Fifth and final heat of the hot saw for pool A here. Matt Coger, doesn't really matter what he does. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Three cuts, no cuts. He's going to the finals. But Wallpage, different story. Wallpage will have to make three cuts, post a time to be automatically in there. Otherwise, he'll fall back in with Mike Slingerman. Again, Matt Coger's time inconsequential. This is only important as a, as a prelude, a preview of what might happen with him when we get to the next round of competition, and that's going to be the finals where he's trying to win for the fourth time in a row. 
If I'm Matt Coger, I've got three brand new Ram trucks. I'm going for a fourth. But regardless, yeah. if I'm Matt Coger, I'm going to use this. Like you said, this is going to be a, a full out training run. I'm on the stage. I've got the lights on. It's going to be the same starting cadence. I'm going to go Hands for this. I'm going to try to win the hot sauce. Hands There's no the reason wood. to play it safe. Get set. A near bobble for Matt Coger on stand number two as he went for that third cut. He had to kind of double clutch on the uh, that third down cut. Double check with Rich Hallett, make sure he didn't actually make contact. Yeah. Let's take a look at it here in the replay. First to the wood by a long shot. Well, Page gets the nod with this effort right here. And watch here, the transition from second to third cut. Comes down, he did make contact with the top of the block, but because it was kind of in line with the third cut, he essentially dropped back into the same or similar slot, and that third cut should be a complete cut. And there's the final official times right there. Mike Forrester coming out on top with a 6.78. Early on, in the, earlier on in the competition, Matt Coger, second place, just to absolutely devastate everyone in the semifinal round. Rob Weibel, third. Matthew Bolton picking up third with a 7.43. But the time posted by Walt Page, an official time, time posted by Nathan Waterfield, the time posted by Matt Slingerland, means those are the four who continue on to the finals. Matt Coger, Walt Page, Nathan Waterfield, and Matt Slingerland. It's time for the Ram Guts and Glory moment. Wow! Walt was to that wood. Both these guys are to the wood exceptionally fast. I can't believe the pressure that Walt was applying to the top. Look at these guys through the top. Oh, Synchronized I think slide. Matt may have got him. Matt may have nipped him right at the end. Wow. What a race. Congratulations to these four from Pool A. The next time we see you here in Tenley Park, Illinois, another group of eight hopefuls trying to make it to the finals of the Steel Timbersport Series U.S. Championships.